Hello everyone, my name is Yi Chao Cui. In this video, I'm going to share our work on sexual minority women's online dating in China. During the presentation, I will talk about the study design and important findings. Our work explores LGBT online dating. The main reason is that nowadays LGBT populations still face challenges such as social discrimination and isolation. Dating apps can serve as an important online space where LGBT users can disclose their sexual orientations and socialize with other users in a convenient way. Our study primarily focuses on bisexual and lesbian women. Here we borrow the definition from the National LGBT Health Education Center. That is, sexual minority women are women who identify as lesbian, bisexual, queer, questioning, and other non-heterosexual identities, as well as women who have same gender partners but identify as straight. In China, sexual minority women are faced with the challenges of high vulnerability and low visibility. In other words, they struggle for recognition within LGBT populations while enduring prevalent social stigma and the lack of public attention. In China, dating apps exclusively designed for the SFW population have gained increasing popularity. They're used for seeking communities and building relationships, which can be very difficult in offline contexts. In this study, we explored the largest sexual minority women's dating app called Rula, which has over 12 million registered users. Rula's basic features include, but not limited to, search nearby, wink feature to show interest in someone, recommended posts from other users, live streaming, and user-controlled sharing of live moments. Existing work on dating apps mainly focused on LGBT communities in Western contexts. These studies explore self-disclosure and LGBT relationship building. However, few studies investigated how stigmatized populations use such platforms in different cultural contexts, such as Chinese culture that tends to value stereotypical family roles. In this study, we hope to understand important factors in building a safer place for SMWs to disclose sexual orientations and building social relationships. There are mainly three research questions to guide our study. We first explore what factors encourage or discourage SMWs in China to use dating apps. We then investigate in what ways SMWs self-disclose themselves on the apps. Lastly, we explore how SMWs build online or offline relationships. In our study, we first reach out to several SMWs users on Weibo, which is one of China's largest social media platforms. We ask them if they want to participate in the study and whether they are willing to invite more SMWs from their own networks. After recruitment, we conducted a preliminary survey to better understand demographic information. We conducted semi-structured interviews with 43 SMWs in China. Now let's take a look at our results. We found that some SMWs feel harassed by advertisements for formality marriages and surrogacy services. Here, I want to briefly introduce formality marriage. In China, formality marriage is a kind of marriage in which SMWs marry other LGBT people of the opposite sex in order to have offspring and avoid social stigma. Many of our participants are opposed for formality marriage because within such marriages, traditional household inequality still exists and in turn might negatively influence their personal lives. They also expressed concerns on surrogacy services because surrogacy is not legally endorsed by the government. As one participant noted, I was consistently bombarded by advertisements for formality marriage. 
We also found that SMWs might deploy distinct self-disclosure strategies to avoid unintentional disclosure. They hope to withhold anything that might disclose their offline social identities, such as their real names, phone numbers, and address. For example, instead of using the search nearby function, some SMWs share cues, such as photos of a corner of their classroom or a lake on their campus, which implies their geographic location while mitigating the risks of being recognized at a glance. As one participant stated, only those who are studying in my school or nearby schools would be able to recognize the places in my photos. We also found that to avoid disclosing personally identifiable information, some SMWs prefer to share thoughts and feelings without disclosing identifiable events. As one participant said, I have a large social circle at school, and I'm afraid of being recognized by my friends. So I express my thoughts on public issues about LGBT people. Another finding is that SMWs might use the dating apps to identify and connect with other SMWs who might already be present in their daily lives. They use dating apps location sharing feature to identify whether someone else is SMW in an offline context. As one participant noted, I wasn't sure if she was a lesbian, so I checked dating profiles of nearby users who were within 100 meters. SMWs might also use your last wink feature in novel ways to identify if someone they met offline was SMW. In our example, the participant said, one day in a bubble tea shop, I saw a girl who dressed like a booch. To confirm, I winked at her. She immediately got it and winked back at me. The takeaway of this study is, Future dating apps should pay extra attention to build a safe self-disclosure environment for stigmatized groups. For example, developing ways for users to avoid seeing promotional information that they might find disturbing. Enhancing apps community boundary management and community member vetting practices. And assessing users to create implicit locational cues to protect their safety. Thank you all for listening. Looking forward to your questions.